Today's video has been sponsored by TDL Canada, located in Trenton, Ontario, Kanakistan. A uh, great wholesale source if you guys are looking for any kind of WISP equipment or ISP related, or you know, they also have cameras and AV stuff as well. So, um, <clears throat> one of the wonderful members of the staff there has sent me, I don't know if I'm allowed to say names, so I won't say names, uh, has sent me this uh, thing. Let's see what it is. Made in China. Two port gigabit PoE extender. Ooh, this ought to be cool. Uh, this of course may not be very useful for a WISP directly per se, but this this may actually be very, very useful for security cameras or, uh, you know, a couple of outdoor wireless APs that all reside in the same broadcast domain, you know? So let's check this out. We're gonna open it up. There's a manual. Okay, there's manual. Here's the device. Comes with the wrench, ground cable. Oh, that's fucking sweet. Who thinks of that? Oh my god, mounting hardware? It comes with mounting hardware too. Yes. And three glands. Hmm. Glands can be very, very handy. Or compression fittings, you know. Unless they get all sloppy and loose and they hang around everywhere. Wow, this these actually tighten up pretty good too. Look at that. That'll tighten up onto most cable, actually. Holy shit. That's a really good cable gland. Okay, fuck yeah. Let's get the um let's get the eh. let's get down to the basics here. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So first of all, we have this fuck that thing's mighty. Look at that. Is that steel? Or what is that? Um, it might actually be stainless, to be honest. It's not, it's metallic for sure. It might be white metal. The bottom is definitely non-ferrous. Um, I have a feeling that this is actually uh, stainless or white metal or aluminum. Top plate right here is just a little bit magnetic, like specifically in there, but uh, nowhere else. Okay, so just out of curiosity, how's this thing gonna look? Oh man, and these are, what are these things? Um, these are, are these three quarter inch? I think that they're three quarter inch fittings. Let's, um, let's just double check that. Go to um, inches, hmm, okay. Yeah, I think they're three quarter inch. These are three quarter inch fittings. All right, so if we take, uh, these guys stick them in here. This is cool because you can actually put pipe on this if you really wanted to, too. This is a really nice housing. Look at that. Look, you know what? Pretty cool. You got your ground log and you got your lands on here. You even have a wrench. That, that's pretty handy. That you've got a wrench to tighten these guys up with. Somebody was thinking about that. That's amazing. All right, and not, okay, so this thing is basically, it's a gigabit PoE extender and switch because you've got one in, two out. And now it also says here that it supports BT. So you can actually use 802.3BT uh, as your power source for it, or PoE plus plus, um, to power this so you can get 230 watt outputs out of it. So that's extremely handy, especially if you've got cameras that have infrared on them or PTZ cams. And I, I'm not exactly sure, it doesn't specify what the distance is on the unit here, but it says um, gigabit, 100 base, and 10 base at greater distances than 100 meters. So, um, yeah, I wish that it actually said what the ranges were on it, but many of these guys can go like big distances. Uh, in fact, I've used long haul ones that'll do 100 megs at distances as much as uh, uh, nearly a kilometer. Uh, believe it or not, and actually, uh, I wish I had a video of that set because you would have loved them. Okay, so anyway, let's um, let's power this thing up with some PoE Plus. All right, so, so we've got some Ethernet going in here because I also connected this into the um, uh, my network here. Let's see here, yeah, cool. You can see that. I'm trying some new lighting. Actually, I've got this big fucking monster above us, so I figured I'll try it out and see if that makes the videos a little bit better. Because as you know, I'm trying to make the video videos better for you guys. All right, so we'll put this guy right here, and let's take this uh, access point that was generously donated by uh, one of you guys, one of my awesome viewers. Um, he donated a bunch of stuff including an uh, Alvarian radio for me to dismantle a little while ago. And I might actually do teardown videos on them, but it's all text, so I don't think anybody will really be interested, but it's still pretty cool. So we're gonna just use this guy as basically a load. Okay. So let's connect this guy, plug this in. And these guys here, they're, they're power hogs. So this little guy here, what does it say on? It's uh, 400 milliamps at uh, 48 volts. So that's roughly 20 watts. All right, so that guy's live. Look at the colors. Damn you, Cisco, you made some really cool colors on here. And so it's powered up. And what the cool thing that I like about this is that it's actually showing uh, multicast traffic. So there's traffic uh, indicated on here now. Um, I'm just lugging shit into it for the sake of plugging shit into it. This is an uh, Instantato 2.3 uh, adapter from Ubiquity. It'll take a uh, standard DOE 48 volts and it'll output 24 volts at a half an amp. So it's good for small devices, but clearly if you did this, you're gonna be asking for trouble, so don't do that, okay? That's dumb. This is just simply for practice purposes. This, 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 this. All right, so there we go. So we got another one plugged in. This guy should power up and absorb some energy. So yeah, we got three LEDs going on here. You can definitely see the traffic on this thing. I don't know exactly how much testing I can do, but I intend to make this a two-part video. So this is the first part. It's just taking a look at the overview 
And then um, a friend of mine who owns a security shop locally has agreed to let me demo this. So we intend to, what we intend to do is we intend to actually put a couple of high draw PTZ cameras on these bad boys. And uh, we want to see how much current this guy can actually suck back. Um, so yeah, because I've noticed that with the uh, PTZ cameras that also have the big infrared arrays in them, they'll crash a lot of different PoE switches or just they'll crash themselves because they can't handle the amount of current. So I want to see because this thing looks really cool. Like where you would use this is if you've got a pole and you need to put two PTZ cams on it or maybe just two cameras, you would run your BT PoE to this guy here and then mount this beautiful thing onto the side of a pole and then have the two leads come up for the cameras there. And I mean like they've, they've clearly designed this thing well enough that it'll handle um, some pretty decent um, bullshit. But you know what? You know me. I like to tear shit apart. So you know what? Let's uh... Let's do the product tear darn part of the video. We're gonna do our tear darn, tear darn part of the video. All right. Ow, I cut myself. Well, actually, I barely did. My skin's made of leather, so it doesn't hurt me. All right. <clears throat> yes. Flip it over and center it because this is sexy as hell. I'm actually, you know what? I don't get excited at really simple stuff like this, but I'm actually kind of excited. This thing just looks, feels, and looks like a wish. I wish I could convey exact how fucking solid this is. Like, it is built well, okay? I'm just, usually when you see these things, they aren't outdoor rated like this. They're just, you know, you stick them in enclosure and be done with it. This guy here, you can stick it right on a pole or on the side of a building or whatever. And um, like I said, this came from uh, TDL Canada. So this is a new product that they're starting to carry. All right, off, oh, look at this. Look, see, the, it's the attention to detail that really impresses me on shit like this. And by the way, I've already taken this guy apart and looked at it, which is why I'm so enthusiastic about it. I'm excited, this is a cool product. So. Look Look at these thermal transfer pads. These are nice. Okay, so it looks like what these guys are drawing the energy, uh, the heat energy from is we've got a, um, that looks like a PoE chip there. This is the activation section of the PoE. And then here's your full bridge rectifiers right here to quote the amazing electro boom. Full bridge rectifier. So these are right here. Now what's really cool from the looks of things. Yeah, dude, this has a separate power board from the actual ethernet transceiver here. That's cool. So there's a cool fucking note right there is that if you blow the power board, you can simply take this in and send it to a repair shop and have them redo it. Or you could call the manufacturer and potentially order replacement power board. And something else which you guys might be able to see here um, is that this has conformal coating on it. And actually, let's just try a quick little experiment. Um, do I have something that produces ultraviolet light? Ultraviolet, you say? So I'm actually getting ready to actually install this light, by the way, permanently on my workbench because I think it'll be very, very handy here. There we go. Let's see now. This guy glows. I'm gonna turn my lights off for a second. Hopefully this doesn't mess up the camera too much. Here we go. All right, so we've got some... Uh, there we go. Yeah, so this is uh, non-UV conformal coating. Some of them, actually one that I used to work with in particular was called LVUF, and that's low viscosity ultrafluorescent, where they would actually put a uh, fluorescing compound into the urethane so that it would show you uh, where the coating had flowed. So regardless of that, whatever, that was just a neat little experiment, but uh, I'll show you some different conformal coatings one day, because you know, it's something to know. I'm gonna mount this on my desk, by the way. It's gonna be cool. Um, so this is waterproofed in layman's terms. This board has been treated with, I, from the way that it's coming off, that that looks like an acrylic enamel, and uh, I use that exact enamel. Um, do I have a can of it left? And I did make a video about this early on. Um, yes. This is one of the uh, acrylic enamels that I use for uh, treating boards. So yeah, that's cool. So the power board's separate and it is waterproof. It's hardened, okay? Now let's take a look at the actual switchboard here. Let's take a look at the switchboard. And by the way, if you're worried about putting this thing back in, it's actually designed that it only goes in one way because the very, very simply put, they offset the headers there, which makes it a lot easier to work with. A lot easier. Now remember, I'm also a repair shop. And so my uh, lab technician, Thomas, repairs this sort of shit on a regular basis. But as you guys probably already know from my videos, I'm kind of the, you know, the power circuit nerd. Geek, dork, homunculus, I don't know. Pick something and just call me names. Don't call me late for dinner. Or surely, I identify as a Soviet T-34. All right, so let's take, let's just put the power board back on here for a second. When you, um, congratulations. No other way. Ah, I've also got the caps on here a certain way, so you can only put it in a specific way. That's beautiful. Cool, very cool. All right, so, um, looking at this. So we've got our import. You can see the beefy, the power circuitry is on here. And look at these. So it looks like we've got some TBS diodes here. Um, these allow for basic, um, surge protect suppression. Now, I'm not seeing the conformal coating on this side. Isn't that odd? So the power board. Oh, I, you know what? Dude, I so see what they've done here. So check this out. So when this is in here like this, they've done the bare minimum of um, formal coating. Okay. So when this is together, right, this surface here will be touching here. So moisture can build up on this surface here and then drip down onto here. So what they've done is they've done the exterior side 
sides of the board with conformal coating um, to protect it. And it looks like this model can actually be modified for three Ethernet ports. And it actually looks like it might already be prepped for it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, because, yeah, I'm not going to spend the time to reverse engineer this thing tonight, okay? But uh, there's tons of protection circuitry in here, as you can see. Tons. But it looks like there's probably going to be a three-port model for this. This is specifically a two-port model. So we've got more protection circuitry in here. Caps and uh, TVS diodes. That's pretty good. I hope my beak of my hat isn't getting in the way. Let me flip my hat around. All right. But, um, yeah, there's more conformal coating on here. And this is a MediaTek uh, MT7530DU Ethernet chipset right here. So this is just a regular dumb switch, okay? Now, here's the cool thing. Look, look, more of this beautiful, sexy, gelatinous shit that uh, transfers heat between the device and the chassis, essentially turning the entire chassis into a heat sink, which is really brilliant, by the way. It's pretty common and hardened equipment. And let's take a look at, the, oh, there's our steel. You remember I was telling you about the steel earlier? Look, right? This, I think this is cast aluminum, by the way. For you metal junkies out there, you're going to be laughing at my idiocy here, but whatever. Look, there's the steel right there. There's a steel plate on the inside. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's pokey jelly. So it's only conformal coated on the exterior sides of the sandwich here, which means that if moisture does get in here, there's going to be a very strong chance that it can wet down on here and damage the board on this side. And because you've got transformers here, matching transformers and power circuitry, and this is, by the way, the high current BT side of the circuit, there's your master uh, TVS diode for taking the brunt of most of the damage, right? Um, you can get some wicked corrosion on here. So um, just one side note to the manufacturer, if you watch this video, which I really hope you do, you need to do full conformal coating on the board, both sides of it. Um, otherwise, this will grow to shit, uh, especially if you get water ingress through the uh, port glands, which may potentially happen. You know that that can happen, okay? But uh, that's that is kind of a big deal, but I mean, all in all, the product itself is pretty sexy so far. Let's take a look at something else here. I want to see what kind of gasket this is. Gasket out of here. So that feels like a standard, uh, this is silicone. This is a silicone gasket, cool. Um, so this looks like a milled housing. It looks like it's been cast milled, but um, I'm not seeing any kind of uh, gas grease in here. If you guys get one of these, I would suggest you take her apart, put a little tiny, teeny, tiny bit. You can actually take your fingers and put some dielectric grease on your fingers and just, you know, loop it all up on here and then put the gasket back in. I mean, the gasket will be perfectly fine on its own. It's just an added measure. It's me being nitpicky, but Christ knows I work with this shit. So, I mean, like, trust me when I say that uh, there's no such thing as overkill. Um, so that being said, I mean, like, the actual construction is actually pretty decent. Uh, I could do a submersion, a submersion, submersion test on this thing and see how she turns out, but, uh, why? Really? Like, why? Okay, so let me try to get the, uh, guys back in here. Let's do this. Putting screws in. Hey, you, yeah. You can jump ahead on this part just fast. You know, do that zippy thing where you fast forward through here and it goes... <laughs> through the, uh, this part of the video because this is the boring part. This is just, you know, me putting it back together this part. You can you can fast forward this part while I'm talking so it goes all squirrely. You know, like high speed shit. Here we go. Alright, and there we go. Okay, this guy go back, back in here like so. Caps are going on the single port side. There we go. Let's put it back together. So, uh, note to self. Remember, uh, on this guy here we've got the, uh, that is the PoE recon or initialization chip. That's the brain for the PoE because this is the power board and here's the full bridge wires. Two of them actually. Um, yeah, we want to make sure that we make proper contact for the heat sink capabilities of this thing. Put these guys back in. And then I want to just stick a piece of cable. This will be the last part of this video tonight, okay? Oh, I've got all four screws. I'm just losing my mind. Here we go. My anxiety is not high. <laughs> By the way, making a mental note not to balance my legs because apparently that makes you guys insane, but you have to respect the fact that I have do have mental illness. Okay, and anxiety and hyperactivity is one of them, along with my attention deficit disorder. Okay, so let's just, um, I'm gonna get a piece of cable here. I just want to see how tightly it works on cable, so I'm just, uh, gonna grab my snippy snips. Uh, these nippers will do the job. Okay, this is just some basic shit shireen, um, single shielding cable. And I'm just gonna, let me just tighten this guy on here. I love this. This is just nice. Nicely built. That, and they can include the, uh, the wrench for you, right? That. And oh, when you're doing these, by the way, again, a little bit of Vaseline, or um, you can put some um, dielectric grease on it. I just want to see if we can squish this orifice up so it'll tighten right around the shaft of this cable. I want to see if it gets tight. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's nice and tight. Can you see that the membrane's actually gripping the sides of it? Ripped for her pleasure. All right. So that's in there. Yeah, look at that. This is just standard installer cable, like outdoor shielded cable, outdoor shielded Cat 5. And as you can see, it's gripping that pretty good. I think that's a pretty tight uh, fit. So you're probably gonna wanna use uh, 
again dielectric grease just to make sure on everything you get some tight seals on things but uh, all in all um I'm looking forward to doing the actual in-shop test with this which will be video two this is just a neat little device I mean like yeah this isn't some complicated device with which warrants a very complicated video or anything this is simply just a cool little you know outdoor rated um, dual output PoE switch this is very cool slash extender right and uh, I believe that this is very well built and uh, as far as things go so far I fully endorse it um the complicated tests that could be performed on it I mean I guess I could do some uh, iperf tests on it and see what kind of throughput we get but I really don't see the point this already says it all that it's one gig so why bother testing it and for the application we know that it's going to be used for there's really no point in really like stress testing it that way so yeah screw it but uh yeah this is part one I think this is great and part two will definitely be done with some tech we'll connect some proper high current cameras to this thing at night and see how they hold up with the infrared that'll be the big test so there she is god that's just i'm loving this this is so lovely this is a lovely device but anyway um yeah so check it out folks uh just a cool little gigabit poe extender that uh, you can get at tdl and um just trying to see if there's anything else in here pretty straightforward yeah I just love that it supports BT, 802.3 BT, 44 to 57 volts. And actually, what's really cool, by the way, is what many of you guys may already know is that most 48 volt devices, like proper PoE devices, are 48 volts, like this Cisco PoE switch, right? So if you dump 48 volts passive into this, it will run. Um, not all devices are like that, but most devices are. I have seen passive uh, or 48 volt. Uh, PoE devices fry when you plug uh, past the 48 volts into them, but it's very rare and it's usually because the power circuitry in them was built like shit. But check this out. You want to see what I was powering this with? Standard 48 volt ubiquity PoE, and this is actually a two pair, it's not even a um, four pair. Four and five, seven and eight, and I plug this guy in here, and that powers it up. So note to self, if you don't have a BT injector, you could potentially use a uh, one amp uh, 54 volt PoE injector on this thing, and then connect standard PoE devices to the outputs on this, like a set of cameras, and be able to run it. You don't necessarily have to run this off a PoE plus switch, or a P BT power supply, so long as you've got enough power in going into this. Now, remember the outputs on this thing max out at 30 watts, but the input clearly says 95 watts max. So the math doesn't quite add up there, except for this. Remember how we saw uh, spots for three ethernet ports here? One, two, three. Look, 95 watts, five watts consumed by the device itself, 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90. So this thing actually is designed. It does actually have a 30 ethernet port inside of it, which looks like it's just not soldered on, by the way. So if you're running this thing just with the dual port, you're not actually gonna be working with the power circuitry that hard. Um, so yeah, you can basically use that 60 watts. If you're using a 54 volt um, PoE brick with 1.5 amp uh, output on it, especially if it's four pair, like an Air Fiber, uh, an Air Fiber 24 Classic, 54 volt, uh, 1.5 amp PoE, that would power this thing quite well. You would get your, uh, I think you would get your full 60 watts out of that. Do the math. So, cool little device. Um, the next uh, time you see this thing, I'll be over at uh, one of my friend's shops, and we will be testing this out with a couple of um, out there P outdoor PTZ cameras that have um, massive infrared arrays to see how they handle for current. So, yeah, pretty cool little device, I guess. Uh, yeah, you'll probably see more of it around. So, anyway, you guys have a great evening, and uh, we'll catch you later. Ciao for now. Bye. Like and subscribe below.